everyone. My name is Asya Rizantseva. I'm coordinator for e-recruitment at the Swedish Council for Higher Education, a Swedish authority that is working with a government assignment to increase the number of Swedes working at the EU administration by informing about career opportunities at EU institutions, agencies and bodies. Today, we are going to talk about one of the newest EU agencies that has been established in 2021. It is the European Agency for the Space Program or EUSPA. In short, the agency is linking space to um, user needs and of course, in order to find out more about the agency's work and first of all, career opportunities that the agency has to offer, I have invited Shurur uh, Yurhus, who is working at the agency's HR department as human resources coordinator. And of, hopefully will tell us more about what kind of career opportunities uh, the agency has to offer. Welcome Shurur, and thank you that you are up for our our interview today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Yes. Uh, before we start talking about career opportunities and the agency's work, I would really like to know more about you. Uh, I know that this is not your first EU agency and you even have some connection to Sweden. So please tell us uh, briefly about your background and education and also why and how did you end up in Prague where EUSBA has its headquarters? Sure. Um, so briefly about myself and, and kind of my educational background and career. So I'm originally from the Faroe Islands, which is a self-governed uh, country within the Kingdom of Denmark. Um, my educational background is a bit of a mix. I did my undergrad or bachelor in the United Kingdom uh, in, in Canterbury, a very quaint kind of English town. Uh, I, did, um, I read um, English and sociology there. And um, during my bachelor degree, I kind of felt that uh, it was not exactly what, uh, what I wanted uh, to study. And um, the deeper I went into to, to my studies, I found out that uh, what I wanted to do was uh, more related to, to politics and especially uh, the European Union. So after graduating from my bachelor's, I, I started a uh, a master's program that's actually funded by the European Commission is one of one of the many um, Erasmus uh, Mundus master programs that the Commission has. This was this one was on European studies in specific, um, and it kind of covers the subjects of European integration, European Union politics, law, history, etc., and kind of. Um, sets you up if you if you fancy for a career in the European Union. Uh, and what these master programs um, usually encourage you to do is that you do um, parts of your studies in one university or country and the second part in another one. So I started actually uh, my first part of this master program in, in European uh, studies in Uppsala, Sweden. So, so that's my link to, to Sweden, uh, where I had a, a wonderful time in, in the student town of Uppsala and also learned a lot from, from the professors and my fellow peers. And then the second part of my studies I did in Germany in, in, in a small university town called Göttingen. Um, after graduating from the European Studies Masters, uh, I did a, um, a traineeship uh, in Brussels together with many other hopeful uh, Europeans. I did it at the mission of the Pharaohs to the European Union. Um, and I was there for, for six months, uh, learning a lot uh, by shadowing my, my, my supervisor in when, when visiting and having meetings with the various uh, institutions, like whether it would be the parliament, uh, the council, the commission, uh, uh, etc. So uh, that's where kind of my, my hands-on experience started with the, with the EU. Uh, and after that, um, I, I went on to do another traineeship actually uh, at the European um, at the uh, European uh, Food Safety Authority in Parma. Uh, and that's kind of where my career in HR started. It wasn't perhaps not written <laughs> anywhere that I was supposed to, to start in, in HR, but uh, I accepted a traineeship in recruitment there. 
uh, that was back in 2017, and I have continued to work uh, in recruitment since. Um, after three years in Parma, um, working uh, in the area of recruitment, but also uh, in, in employer branding strategy. And, and, and one of the topics that we worked a lot on in the agency in Parma is how to attract candidates from underrepresented countries. For example, Sweden, which I, which is also one of the reasons that I, I happily accepted your invitation, because I really believe that it's important that we try and promote career opportunities in the underrepresented countries. And one of those kind of pockets of Europe that's typically underrepresented is or are the Nordic countries. So yeah, after three years in, in Parma, I applied for a staff position in the agency in Prague. It was called the GSA back then, but as you rightly said, uh, since then we've we kind of transform and we become used by and, and it's part of the one one of the, the newest agencies if you like uh, and yeah i've been working here since 2020 uh in also in the recruitment team and as you rightly mentioned as well um due to the uh, increased mandate of the agency uh we have um we are growing uh, also in staff mom, uh, numbers so uh there's been uh, a lot going on on the recruitment front so i'm looking forward to to talking about that as well with you. Okay, but uh, before we start talking about recruitment and the numerous opportunities uh, for both traineeship and employment, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the agency itself and uh, what does it actually do and what areas of um, responsibility the agency has and how does it link uh, uh, space to user needs? Yes, exactly. So. One of the core mission of the agency is to implement the EU space program and to ensure reliable and safe and secure space related services uh, and also in order to, to optimize or maximize the, the social economic benefits for European citizens and, and business as a whole. So, so what are the space programs? So uh, it's Galileo, uh, which is the global navigation satellite, which is a global na navigation satellite system. Perhaps you would uh, you would be familiar with GPS, which is kind of the American equivalent of, of Galileo, which is a, is a European one. And then we also have EGNOS, which works as an augmentation system, so it, it improves the accuracy. And then um, also Copernicus, which is the often, or it's branded as, as Europe's eyes on Earth, which is an Earth, Earth, Earth observation program. And uh, linked to our change of identity, if you like, uh, our new USPA uh, agency. We also um, got responsibilities for Govsat.com, which is the secure governmental communication, and also uh, space situational aware awareness, SSA. And in 2023, we will also um, be in charge of the space um, surveillance and tracking, which kind of falls under the, the umbrella of the, of the SSA. Um, linking space to user needs. What does that mean? Who are the users? Um, the users are everywhere. I mean, whether that's industry or you and I, I mean, agriculture, um, public transport, maritime, rail, um, uh, location-based services that you and I use on a daily basis on our mobile phones, our apps, uh, you know, they're all our users. Uh, and actually, um, I believe that we have 2 million uh, enabled uh, Galileo um, uh, smartphones sold uh, actually uh, two billion, so that's quite a significant number. So, so that's the kind of link to to user needs, and that w what we strive to do. And there's also the commercialization aspect of it, and as well as the market development aspect of this, which also falls under our mandate as well. Thank you. Really exciting different areas the agency is working with. And obviously, if you don't think about it, you maybe don't really make this direct connection of how the work of this agency can influence our everyday life. But just like you say, location services, that's something that we use pretty much every hour and maybe several times per day. 
And uh, but uh, if we talk about uh, career opportunities um, as the main focus of our interview, and maybe we start like if you can describe what can uh, more about the agency. So you have the headquarters in Prague. Is that the only location that you have? So and how many people are working at the agency today? And what can uh, a regular workday look for staff at USPA? Sure. Uh, no, we are not just, we don't just have uh, locations in Prague. We're actually a so-called multi-site agency. So the headquarter indeed is here in Prague. And that's where most of the, of the administration sits, for example. But we also have uh, smaller sites in Saint-Germain, just outside of Paris, uh, in, in uh, the Netherlands as well, uh, and in Spain. Uh, however, the, the larger, largest chunk of, of the population uh, is based here in Prague. Um, at the moment, uh, in terms of staff number, I think we are more than 250, but that's ever growing. Uh, and, and we're looking to recruit more and more within the next few years. Uh, aside from that, we also have um, trainees uh, working with us. I think at the moment we have around 20 trainees, but again, the, it, it, intact with the growth of the agency, the number of trainees should also grow as well. Then obviously also a lot of contractors uh, working with us through, uh, through the public tenders that we have uh, so, so we can procure services uh, through, through, through this um, and they can provide expertise and support as well. So yeah, I'd say, uh, I don't know how to have the actual number, but around 250, but that's growing in terms of staff and in, in various sites. Okay, and uh, regular day at work, uh, what time do yes. you usually start? Is it very intensive no. at some periods or is it intensive all the time? <laughs> in general, like, I guess it's very hard to tell about every specific person that is working there, but... Uh, how would you describe uh, working uh, conditions? Yes, uh, I mean, uh, I think it's very uh, dynamic, I would say, rather than perhaps intense. Um, if I can say uh, how it is, uh, like a daily work uh, life of a, of a recruiter, uh, um, especially now that we're facing this kind of mass recruitment, uh, you, uh, you work on a daily basis with people uh, from different departments in the agencies with bit different backgrounds, uh, um, whether that is a professional background. Uh, we hire a lot of engineers, for example, as well. Uh, so you constantly deal with people with different ideas uh, and different ways of working as well. So it's very dynamic uh, for us in, in recruitment to, to, um, you know, to, to work with hiring managers from, from different expertise and the management uh, as well, but also uh, colleagues who participate in, in selection boards who help with the recruitment and also uh, candidates uh, trying to, to um, answer queries from candidates, uh, do all the correspondence with, uh, with candidates uh, along the uh, recruitment uh, uh, procedure. So, so it's very dynamic. You, you come in contact with uh, people from, from different, like I said, different backgrounds and, uh, and, and different uh, ways of working uh, and thinking so uh, I would really describe it as, as uh, dynamic interesting and yeah yeah challenging in, in general okay thank you you mentioned that you have around 20 trainees uh, so how do does one become a trainee at the agency do you how do you apply do you recruit directly or is it blue book please tell us Yes, no, so we don't uh, hire our trainees through the Blue Book scheme. Uh, we have our own traineeship calls that we uh, post uh, on a yearly basis. Uh, we try to. Um, actually, we are aiming to publish the ones for 2022 uh, very soon. Um, and uh, we have calls in all um, like sectors of, of the agency in the administrative field, also security and also in more operational fields. So whether that is in the administrative fields, whether that is in legal, in IT, in finance, in HR, 
uh, or in security or in the operational ones in, in Galileo and EGNOS in the programs themselves. Uh, so we really have opportunities for, for trainees uh, from all types of uh, interests and, and background. Uh, they need to apply uh, through to the, to the specific traineeship call. So we publish one for each um, area so we have one call for Galileo one call for security one call for HR and the trainees are welcome to apply to as many as they see fit and then we run a selection based on the needs of the department so when the department has a need to hire uh, they go through all the CVs shortlist those candidates uh, that are, are matching the, the requirements uh, and then we set up an interview and then in case um, the candidate or candidates are successful, yeah, we, we offer them uh, a post and they, and yeah, they're expected to relocate to Prague and start a trainship with us, which uh, is up to uh, one year. Uh, and it's, it, it's uh, paid, it's 1,400 uh, euros a month uh, as it stands. Uh, and yeah, really uh, being a trainee in USPA, it's not that you just shadow uh, your, your colleagues or supervisor, you really do hands-on work and you really contribute to the daily work of your team or, or the agency as a whole. That's at least what we try to encourage our trainees to do. Uh, you are assigned to a supervisor when you start as a trainee here and you agree on the objectives together with your supervisor. Uh, and yeah, then it's also up to the interest of the trainee what they want to learn. But really, we really like to see our trainees contributing and not, like I said, just, just shadowing. Is it a requirement that applicants for traineeship must have a completed university degree or do you even offer some kind of traineeship for those that are still studying for a degree? Yes, exactly. I, I should also mention that. So basically, if uh, we have so-called regular traineeships, which I just explained, which you have to apply to the specific call. And then we also have ad hoc traineeships, which are uh, designed for trainees who are currently, um, sorry, who, candidates who are currently uh, undergoing um, uh, studies and as part of their study kind of curriculum is, uh, is, is a mandatory traineeship. Uh, so we also op offer up to three months traineeship for, for ad hoc trainees as well. And then the requirement is that they are currently studying and it's, it's part of the, their curriculum to, to seek out a, a traineeship. Uh, for our regular traineeships, uh, it's not a requirement that you have a university degree. It's enough that you're towards the end of the university degree. So if you're really close to finishing your, your bachelor, that's you are still eligible. But yeah, in principle, um, a candidate is eligible as soon as they have uh, graduated as well. And, and those uh, and those short-term trainees for those undergraduates, uh, they are unpaid in that case. Yes, they are yes. unpaid, mm -hmm. uh, and they are only they only last up to three months. But it's not just for undergraduates; for bachelors, it can also be for masters or or PhD students okay. as well. And they are unpaid, yes. And the regular ones are paid, and they last up to one year. The, the unpaid ones only three months. Okay, and uh, some institutions and agencies, they have a requirement that uh, you can apply for the paid uh, traineeship program if you have not done traineeship or worked at the EU administration. Does this unpaid three months traineeship um, for some, somehow makes uh, your chances to apply for a paid traineeship later on uh, less or... Mm. It really depends on the agency or the institution. For example, we accept applicants that already have undergone paid traineeship or unpaid traineeships in other agencies or institutions. So uh, this really depends on, on the rules of each agency on whether they accept applicants that have already undergone a uh, traineeship, whether paid or unpaid uh, in any agency or institution. So it's a bit difficult to say, but what I but can say- But at the EU SBA, you accept- uh, Yes, we, we accept. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I can, what is perhaps men worth mentioning is that if you um, have done um, an unpaid traineeship for us for three months, you are not, uh, eligible 
to apply for uh, for a regular traineeship. So this is perhaps worth mentioning if you're interested in doing a regular traineeship paid one. Um, you you're not eligible if you've already done a traineeship, even if it's unpaid before at USPA. Okay. Uh, well, this is to ensure a equal and fair uh, treatment when selecting the candidate, so that the candidate who has already been in the agency it doesn't have an advantage over the one that that hasn't. Okay, that's good to know. Um, another question that usually um, uh, applicants for traineeships are asking: you, if we talk about this paid one-year traineeship, you said that it's paid and uh, you get. 1400 euro per month is that enough for a trainee to um, rent um, an apartment or a room and also pay regular expenses um, and is it also hard to find accommodation in Prague for a trainee um, good question actually um, it used to the grant used to be 1200 uh, but we in in line with inflation and the rise of the, the energy costs, uh, uh, we increased it to 1400 in, in the summer. Um, unfortunately, Prague is not as cheap as it used to be uh, due to inflation. And the biggest um, uh, chunk of the grant will definitely go towards accommodation. Accommodation can be um, uh, quite expensive in Prague if you compare it to the the cost of living or the average salaries in general in Prague. However, um, going out uh, for, for dinner or drinks or recreational activities and public transport, for example, is still relatively inexpensive in comparison to other uh, EU capitals. So definitely 1400 euros a month is enough to get by. Uh, I mean, you will spend a lot of that on accommodation and, and um, bills, uh, if it's not included, but uh, the rest of, of the expenses are still uh, low or at least lower than, than in other EU capitals. Does the agency somehow help um, uh, find accommodations? Maybe you have uh, accommodations for staff that, uh, for instance, uh, European Central Bank has some building where trainees and contract agents can be staying during their employment or is it a responsibility for every trainee? Uh, yes, it is the responsibility of uh, every trainee to, to find their own accommodation. Unfortunately, we don't have this service at the moment, but that being said, we help and guide them. So as soon as they accept the offer, we send them a package with the information about where to look for recommendation. We also always, uh, if, if they agree to it, put them in contact with other trainees uh, so they can help each other out, the traineeship community in general, in trying to find um, the best accommodation, especially in the beginning, people perhaps look for short term solutions. And then when they move here, they kind of um, go uh, house hunting uh, by themselves. So it's not that we completely leave them to their own devices, but we don't have this type of service at the moment that you mentioned, for example, the ECB has. But yeah, we send them uh, information on where to look and we're always there you know, at their disposal should they have any questions or something. Okay, thank you. And of course, the last question before we move on to employment opportunities is, uh, what are the chances of getting employed after one completes traineeship? Yes, no, that's a, that's a good question. Um, the trainees are an important um, uh, source of like talent pool for us. Um, um, if you have done a traineeship for us uh, or in USPA, or it could also be for any other EU agency, um, you definitely have an advantage in the sense that you already know how uh, the work is done here uh, and so on. However, uh, when it comes to staff positions, uh, these are all uh, posted publicly and uh, um, you, you, uh, if you, you, you are a trainee, if you were a trainee, you have to compete for these posts together with uh, the rest uh, of the applicants from, from all over Europe. Uh, and that's done in, a, in a, a fair and transparent way. That being said, there are also other ways for, for a trainee to, to stay in the institution, for example, uh, through 
as a contractor, uh, for example, uh, through one of the, the, the procurements that, that we have, uh, one of the, the companies that have won procurements or tenders with us, they can stay as, as contractors. However, this is not controlled by us in recruitment. We, we don't take care of this type of recruitment. So uh, in terms of how easy it is or to get the staff position after a traineeship is difficult to say, but it's definitely uh, an important talent pool for us. And there are a number of trainees that have become staff eventually. But again, uh, it, it, you know, they need to, to apply on equal footing with all the other applicants for, for staff procedure. It's not like you walk, <laughs> just walk into to a job here with us no. if you've done a traineeship. Of course not. Uh, staff positions then, what kind of types of contract uh, do you um, um, offer and also how is it easy or not so easy to apply for staff positions? Uh, do you use the same scheme as open competitions or how do you recruit uh, people and what is their selection procedure? Yes, yeah, so we have... Uh... Uh, we have temporary agent and contract agent posts. Uh, these contracts are typically five years with the option of renewal. And then the second renewal, uh, you may become um, permanent. Uh, they are open for all EU um, citizens and also at the moment citizens uh, from Norway and Iceland as well. Uh, and they, uh, um, we are usually done through an open competition. Uh, we run our own calls. We can also make use of the EPSO database, uh, but this is not something that we do frequently. We usually run our own calls also because we are very often have uh, kind of niche profiles. Um, the, the core business of the agency, we mostly hire um, engineers. Uh, so in those cases, we, we definitely make use of our own uh, external calls, uh, but also in the administrative field, uh, whether it's in legal, procurement, finance, HR, IT, security as well. Uh, uh, we usually have uh, our own open calls. Um, of course, we can also make use of internal mobility, uh, interagency mobility and so on. But uh, yes, uh, we, we usually run external selections where everyone is welcome to apply as long as they meet the eligibility criteria. Like I said, one of them is the nationality element, but also depending on the, um, the seniority of the post, uh, the grade is also a certain number of years of work experience. So it's very important when candidates apply, uh, we publish all of calls on our external website and we have a e-recruitment tool. So candidates need to create a profile. They can also then sign up for job alerts. So every time um, we publish a new call, they get automatic notification to their email. And then they need to fill in their application form. Uh, and, and if they meet the eligibility criteria, um, they will go through uh, their CVs will be, be screened, etc. Okay, and what about uh, seconded national experts? Do you also have positions? Yes, we also have a certain number of posts for seconded national experts. This is um, a different uh, application form or way where they need to apply vis-a-vis -vis the, their permanent representation or their mission in case it's a non-EU member state. So permanent representation for the EU member states, they need to, to submit an application through there. Uh, and if it's from, from Norway or Iceland, it's through, through the mission of Iceland and Norway to the EU. And yeah, okay. we have a, yeah, a number of, uh, of posts available for, for, for secondments. Okay. Uh, what kind of profiles are mostly recruited? You mentioned engineers, but what would be the general profiles and uh, yes, that so would be relevant? Um, so it depends on the vacancy notice, of course. But like I said, uh, engineers, uh, that could be mechanical or aerospace uh, engineers, for example. That's a typical profile. But we're always looking for a diverse task force. Uh, so diverse in the sense of uh, also in terms of nationality, gender, 
etc but also background and sector so it's not uh, a necessity that you have experience in the space sector should you apply for for one of the engineering posts uh, really we're open-minded when it comes to that and or always looking for for uh, diversity as well uh, and then uh, we also have um, a security department uh, and also a secure security accreditation um, area as well so also people with experience in in security and then the um, the in the administrative field like i mentioned uh, legal and procurement uh, finance hr it and we also have uh, a communications team like i mentioned before uh, the commercialization of the space program communication of it is also important as well as the market development we also have a market and development uh, department uh, and also project management and control uh, department as well so it really is, is all types of different profiles uh, that we're we're looking for and um, like i said it's not a requirement that you have experience in the space sector before um, quite the contrary we're, we're open to 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 anyone and uh, what about uh, this um, training, internal training? Let's say I come um, with very strong uh, profile in communication, but I need to maybe understand the space sector a little more. Do you offer any types of internal courses and training opportunities for uh, personal and professional development of your staff? Definitely. I mean, we are a, um, a learning organization. Uh, we actually have a dedicated team in HR uh, dealing with the learning and development of staff members. Uh, and there is always a learning curve when you start with us. You, you go through a nine month uh, probationary period where um, you, know, you, you get to learn the job. And if there are certain training that you need to go through as part of of your everyday work uh, that is definitely provided by the agency and the agency always encourages staff to seek out uh, learning opportunities uh, in the interest of the service but also for personal growth um, of the staff member as well um, so yeah we we offer this and like i said we have a dedicated uh, learning and development team uh, in hr dealing with with that Okay, and of course I cannot but uh, not ask about what is the working language of the agency and what are the language requirements when you apply for a job? So um, overall English uh, is the working language uh, at USPA. Um, in order to be eligible to apply, uh, you, need to, uh, you need to have knowledge of two EU languages. English will be tested um, throughout the recruitment process. And then you also need to have knowledge of uh, another EU, EU language. Uh, native uh, English speakers uh, also need to then demonstrate the knowledge of, of a second language as well. Um, that being said, for certain profiles, other languages might be required. For example, um, uh, in if you like i said we're a multi-site agency so if you work in france and spain perhaps for certain profiles it's it's required that you interact with um with this the local stakeholders there so perhaps then you would have to to have a knowledge of spanish and french and the same for us in prague for certain profiles perhaps in in if you work in facilities or in certain profiles in security it's it's required that you would speak the local language but that will always be be spelled out in the vacancy notice but in general 90 percent if not more uh, english is the working language of course it's always a benefit if you speak more languages and this is also going back to, to the topic of earlier of of, uh, of learning and development uh, we always encourage our staff to to seek the opportunity to learn um, as many languages as possible but okay. it's not a requirement too uh, is for the eligibility criteria and do you have the uh, eligibility criteria for further promotion uh, like in the institutions that you have to uh, have an exam in third language in order to yes. develop in your career it's the same here um, if you um, if you're up for uh, reclassification as we call it in our jargon or, or promotion yeah. um, you mm. need to demonstrate a knowledge of a third language at minimum b2 level 
the same goes for uh, a, uh, a permanent contract and you also need to demonstrate the knowledge of a third language uh, in order to 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 get that and also in order to 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 go through a successful reclassification indeed but the 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 um to acquire this, the agency helps and uh, um, you can apply to get uh, the costs covered for, um, for, for learning the, the third language. Of course, there are ceilings. Uh, so if you go for a private teacher, it's usually um, above the ceiling, but then parts of the costs for, for trying to acquire the third language may be covered. Of course, if you go for group lessons, they are usually cheaper than perhaps uh, it, the cost is completely covered by, by the agency. Okay. If it's, as long as it's in the spirit of a third language. If you already come uh, with uh, a third language in your bag, then there uh, there's the process of getting it approved uh, through EPSO as well. Okay. Sounds good and uh, really um, great opportunity, as you said, uh, the agency is expanding uh, from what I know since we publish uh, vacancies in our information channels and the network for, for future EU careers in Facebook on a daily basis, uh, then I know that the agency has new vacancies coming up pretty much on a weekly basis. Uh, so it's just to create this um, job alert uh, and sign up. Uh, to get notifications um, and there is uh, very much information about um, all kind of uh, career opportunities on your website. If we leave the discussion about careers and talk about Prague, very beautiful city uh, and uh, um, very historic city, but how is it to work and live there? Um, because, of course, you would need to relocate once you choose the career at uh, USPA. So what are your uh, best tips? What is, what is it that you like about living in Prague? Um, yes, uh, good question. I mean, um, I've been living in Prague now for two years, and I must say that I, I enjoy it a lot. Uh, as you said, it's a, it's a beautiful city. It's one of the most visited uh, EU, EU capitals, uh, for sure. There are tourists all, all year round, so that also means that it's, it's very well connected. Um, you have an international airport with flights uh, to all over the world, uh, and it's it's uh, it's it's a very green city as well. Um, lots of parks. Uh, you know, you of course have the Vltava uh, running through the city, the river, uh, and um, lots of opportunities also for um, for recreational activities. Uh, whether you're, you're you're into sports or, or other activities as well. Uh, the agency also promotes a, a good work-life uh, balance, um, so with flexible uh, working hours, uh, also um, opportunities to to work from home, uh, you know, uh, up to a certain extent, um, and also, um, you know, um, generous uh, amount of uh, annual leave days, uh, public holidays were closed as well. So really it gives you the opportunity to enjoy the city or if you prefer, like I said, you can also leave <laughs> uh, the city if you prefer that. But life in Prague really is, is, is great. Uh, I think we briefly touched upon it when we discussed the, the traineeship grant that it's still relatively inexpensive um, in comparison to other uh, European capitals. Of course, the salaries are also reflected in that sense. Uh, as you, you are aware, uh, there is the coefficient, so those, the salaries reflect uh, the general cost of living here. But still, the main expense will perhaps go to uh, towards the, the accommodation. Uh, but the rest uh, is quite uh, inexpensive to go out for, for dinner or, or lunch with friends, family, and, 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 and drinks as well. And also, if, if you're into the more healthy lifestyle, uh, going for, for hikes in the mountains, um, yeah, enjoy the lakes, uh, the parks here, uh, it, it really, really has it all. And also a very, very good um, public uh, transport system, really extensive and, and, and affordable public transport system. Yes, I just recently have been in Prague uh, as a part of the presidency and uh, I was pleasantly surprised by the prices, both for food, uh, 
and for public transportation, especially in comparison to Stockholm, it is extremely <laughs> yes. cheap. Uh, and uh, oh, yeah. also, I totally agree, it's very um, cozy and comfortable play city to be in and um, very easy to travel with um, subway and tram and buses. So um, very yes. nice uh, system of public transportation. Uh, I have only one last question to ask you, um, and I hope you can give me an encouraging and inspiring answer. Why should our listeners um, choose a career at the USPA and apply for traineeship or for a job? Okay, yeah, good question. I think I will start in general uh, because I perhaps I think most of the listeners or viewers are are based in Sweden. Uh, I think it's a pity that uh, in general there is the problem um, for agencies and institutions to attract candidates from from Sweden, uh, and this is something that. Um, we should all work towards improving. So I'm very happy that you're trying to do it at, at your best, but also us uh, as an agency should try our best in, in attracting uh, candidates from underrepresented countries. That's not just Sweden or, or the Nordic countries, that's also other countries in Europe that are underrepresented. Um, I think, um, uh, what, and then why is specifically used, but I think, uh, I think we, we briefly also talked about it, is a is, uh, very uh, ambitious and interesting uh, mandate that the agency is, is working on, really unique uh, as an operational uh, EU agency, um, you know, um, where we try to implement the, the EU space program. Uh, and you'll get to work with colleagues uh, from, from various different um, backgrounds uh, and knowledge. So uh, it's, it's very dynamic uh, overall as, as a workplace. And also whether you are uh, applying for, for a job based in Prague or one of the other sites that we have, uh, it gives you the chance to experience life in another uh, EU country. Uh, to broaden your horizon, et cetera, which uh, I think it's good for, for, for anybody. Absolutely. And it's also a great opportunity to even maybe start a career and uh, also experience EU at a very exciting new agency. Thank you very much, Urur, for all your answers and for very um, detailed information about career opportunities. Uh, I really hope that uh, those that are going to watch our interview uh, are going to get inspired. Uh, so if you want to find out more information, uh, just go to the agency's website, euspa.europa.eu. There you find every Thing about the agency, its work, all the projects and programs. You would uh, uh, can read more about what is the difference between Galileo and uh, um, other parts uh, of uh, the agency's work. And also, once again, uh, check out career opportunities. Since it's a growing agency, now it's the time to join it as a trainee or as um, a colleague. Thank you once again. Uh, and uh, I hope that one day you will get uh, more Swedish colleagues that you will be interviewing and recruiting very soon. Yes, me too. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.